welcome to the True Talk Cafe podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited you're here. Our podcast will tackle a myriad of topics ranging from relationships to personal development and everything in between. My name is Renee Stewart, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Anna Garcia, Carla DeCour, and Lali Ramirez Bennett. Collectively, we span four generations. Can you believe that? We've all experienced ups and downs in our personal lives and professional careers that have qualified us to share our unique perspectives with you, and we're excited to do so. But before we get into today's content, I wanted to let you know where you can find us on social media. On Instagram and Facebook, you can use at True Talk Cafe, and on Twitter, you can use at True Talk Cafe One. Don't forget to like us, rate us, and leave a review. We value your feedback. We want to ensure that we are providing content that resonates with you. So please don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on whatever platform you listen to your podcast. Spoiler alert, you will want to stay tuned to hear what our guests are going to share about this exciting topic today. Also, stick around to find out how you can join us on a live show. We would love to have you join us on one of our episodes. Now, let's get started. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of True Talk Cafe. Today's question is, do you know how to elevate your personal brand's visibility? We talked earlier about how to create your personal brand. The second episode was about how do other people see your personal brand? And now we're going to talk about how you can escalate your visibility, okay, in the workplace and on social media. So basically, you know, building a highly visible personal brand on social media requires a strategic approach, consistent effort, and engaging content. So as we get into today's episode, we're calling the visibility code. We're going to be exploring actionable strategies for assessing your current brand visibility, leveraging leadership opportunities, and navigating the fine line between self-promotion and humility. So I'm going to hand it over to Anna to start us off. Hey guys. So yes, when we're thinking about the strategic landscape, visibility is key to opportunity, right? Personal branding elevates your profile, makes you more visible, not only to your peers, but maybe that next boss, that next person that you want to see that, recruiters and industry influencers. So by actively sharing insights on social media, contributing to the industry publications, and speaking at events, you become a familiar face in the strategy community. Or as I like to call it, you become an expert in the field that is highly regarded and sought after, right? So moreover, in the workplace, the importance of consistent communication, effective networking, and the power of mentorship is enhancing your brand within your organization. But it's equally important to elevate your personal brand in the workplace, right? There's not one or the other that you have to do it in. It's about doing it everywhere. So our guest today is Maria. Maria is a guest lecturer at the University of Texas SBDC. It's editor-in-chief of the award-winning personal branding blog, Hey guys, so she's like really on the topic, right? And a contributing columnist to major publications, Maria was awarded the Texas Governor's Excellent in Small Business Award. So talk about elevating your brand. And as a founder of Brand Chat, a recognized online chat focused on marketing and branding, she earned her BBA in marketing from Texas Tech University and graduate work at Cornell, work at Cornell University and the University of California and Davis and University of Phoenix. Welcome, Maria. We hope to you. for some great insights from you. Carla, Thank I think you. you have a question you want to ask, Maria. I see you over there wanting to. <laughs> so, Maria, it's such a pleasure <laughs> to have you here. So we want to ask you, you, what steps can professionals take to assess their current level of visibility within the organization? I think it's really important to know what your goals are. What do you want to be known for? I think that's where people do struggle with because they try to either mirror or uh, copy even what somebody else is doing because they may have more of an elevated or very visible brand. But really, it's more important for us to be true to who we are and to be able to showcase that personal brand in a lot of different ways, but it to be, as said, very authentic. So. 
when we look at that, it's, you know, what do you want to be known for? Who are you? What are your beliefs? What are your goals? What are your core values? All of that is a part of you discovering exactly and really unearthing who your actual brand is. You have a personal brand, but you may not have put words towards it. So if you can start looking at that, now you can understand what the words are towards it, how people describe you or how you want to be described. I had a coach a long time ago when I used to speak with the Texas Women's Conference who said, you know what, one of the things you need to know is what is the word garden that you want to plant so that people use those words to describe you. And sometimes it's you framing that using those words. And as soon as you start doing that, other people then start mirroring that too, because they'll hear you either are, you know, as somebody who focuses on marketing, as somebody who is a marketing data geek, whatever words you're using, that's how you can help brand yourself. And it does solidify that brand within somebody's mind. That's excellent. And, you know, I've been in external relations for about 15 years now. And I remember that in the past, we used to use mostly LinkedIn to really yeah. promote ourselves on social media. But slowly, I started seeing more requests from Facebook and people actually having professional Facebook pages. So yeah. what factors do you think professionals should consider when choosing which social media to focus on for their personal branding? Sure. I think LinkedIn is always going to be a given for professionals. It's the professional network that is most generally accepted by professionals. There are some professions, let's say that if you're in creative industry, entertainment industry, maybe even with more of the marketing spin or social spin, you can look at Facebook because that is some place that other people are also still not highly professional, but you can be professional in your Facebook business page. So the fact that you have that opportunity separate from your personal profile is wonderful. You just need to think, what is it that you want to be known for and where can you be consistent? Because a lot of people look at these platforms and they think, okay, I'm going to go to all these platforms because that's where eyeballs are at. But if you're not consistent, then what it looks like is the last time that you posted is the last time that you've been active in anything. And we don't want to work with anybody that hasn't been active in the last six months or the last 45 days. We want somebody who's always there at the cutting edge. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We want to be able to connect with and follow people who really are at the top of their game. And where can that be for you? Is it LinkedIn and Facebook? Or can you handle being in LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat? You know, where else can you be on YouTube? You've got to select where you need to be and where you can showcase this the most, because maybe LinkedIn, you can showcase it the most with some of the LinkedIn publications and the blogs you can put forth, or maybe you're more of a video person. So you can do some of that in LinkedIn. I need to be on YouTube because right. you could be on TikTok and Instagram, but YouTube is also where people search when they want to go no go do or buy. And when they're doing research, they go to YouTube. So that may be more in alignment with your professional brand. Again, it's knowing what your goals are and what you want to be known for. That'll help you decide and also where you can be consistent. That's the big thing. Is there a right way or a wrong way or approach to do that? But also, it's okay, right, to not be right the first time and to change your mind or to readjust. Oh, yeah. It's actually much more human to realize, okay, this isn't a good fit for me, just like we would at a networking event, sometimes even with a company that was the perfect company. And then we got in there and realized, you know what, this isn't in alignment with my core values. That's okay to go forth. And in fact, that's a nice story for you to include about, okay, this wasn't a fit. And then I went ahead and did this. So make the changes that you need to. That's not something that will hurt you. But do understand that eventually you do have to land into some sort of consistency. So if you decide, all right, you know, I'm going to try LinkedIn and maybe you decided YouTube because you thought you really were going to go out there and be able to do videos. But then you realized trying to balance everything that videos were a little bit much and what you needed to edit and what you wanted to get to because you're maybe not an editor at heart. So now you pull back and think, I'm going to focus just on LinkedIn and really look at LinkedIn communities because I could be quicker in that engagement than trying to become a professional video editor if that's not a part of what I need to do. Again, let's not get bogged down with the skills because you don't want that to be in the way of you actually being able to project, promote, and really be in your authentic personal brand delivering on whatever company brand promise or whatever focus goal that you have for yourself as an, an individual or professional. So thank you. Thank you for that. Go. I do have another follow-up question very briefly. I noticed that uh, when it comes to Facebook, some people oftentimes have a professional and a personal page, right? 
do you have any recommendations on that? I personally don't have a separate because to me that is just too much to handle. But yes, but mm -hmm. also I do want people to see, you know, my personal side. So I do share my personal stuff and I don't, you know, friend everyone, but people that I have met that I do have some type of relationship with on a professional level, but I want them to see that personal side of me. Any feedback on that? Again, it's your, how much can you handle and what do you want to project there? So for me, I have both because my personal is very personal. It's very cousins, aunts, uncles, and family. I don't connect with anybody else there. If they outreach to me, to friends there, I more than likely will not do that if we're not actual real life friends. So I use my professional profile or my business profile to connect with everybody. Some people do not like the business profile. So if you're joining groups, let's say on Facebook, some groups don't allow a business page to become a part of that because this can be more than one person managing that business page. So they only let personal profiles go through. So you need to also know what your purpose is. Are you connecting with people on Facebook or is there a different reason? Are you there helping to promote and to be able to showcase that personal side, but not really looking for interaction? And is your personal profile set for that? Because some people like to use their personal profile for that. They don't even do any things personal on socials at all. Man. Maria, you really have given us in just the first set of questions, <laughs> a lot of takeaways. I mean, I think one of the key factors that you said is making sure you're authentic to yourself and that you decide what's right for you. The timeliness of things, right? Because yes. as we talk even about our, that doesn't have to be across the board, right? Yeah. So, so some pretty awesome advice on that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. What are some effective strategies for enhancing your personal brand at work? What would you give to that? I think at work, you just need to know exactly what it is that your goals are. Is it that you want to be seen as a leader? You want to be seen as an innovator? And then looking at what you're doing socially, because if people are going to look for you socially, regardless of what platform you're at, and if you're there, you know, and your Instagram is just highly, this is everything where I just let loose and, and this is travel bug and, or this is where maybe I'm upset or, you know, just really complaining and sharing a lot about an employer, then that may not be good for you. And you have to really think about that because people don't just look at whatever you share with them anymore. They don't just look at your face to face interaction. They are looking for you on social. Yeah. And whatever they find gets to be a part of your reputation. So it's important for us always to Google ourselves or search ourselves in all socials just to see what comes up. You know, you might have that friend who tags you on everything. I have a few of them. There's some dear, dear friends to me, but they tag me on every single thing about you know politics mm -hmm. and fundraising. And I'm like, I am so not wanting to be known for any of this. So yes. I actually have to untag them. I reach out to my friends and I say, I'm so sorry. There is no way that I can say anything about this or have you tag me because this isn't going to work for what I want people to be that first impression. I know how lasting that is. Mm -hmm. I even have some friends, you know, because I do a lot of speaking with Google, they'll tell me what they dislike so much about Google. And I'll tell them, listen, I need to remove you from this page. And it's not because I dislike you as a friend. I really do like you, your own opinions. I value them, but I just can't have it here because I have a bunch of Googlers that connect with me here. And this is not the spot for me to have this kind of conversation. I don't want that for public record. We can have that private conversation, but I do reach out to my contacts so they know exactly where I'm at. I had one of my dear, dear friends. He just is not a Google fan at all. And I explained to him, you know, we had that one-on-one -on -one conversation and he was very nice. He said, you know what, Maria, I understand what you're doing and I understand you're helping small businesses. So, no, you know, I'll, I'll lay off of that if we can stay connected. I said, okay, well, I'm not going to remove you then or block you. Just please behave. And you just have to have sure. open conversations because I know that they want to, you know, they get so excited sometimes and it's just they don't realize that the next steps are the consequences of all those actions. So I like to let them know for that so they know that I'm still in relationship with them. But at the same time, I keep my professional profile very clean. I think that's that's something very worthwhile with sharing, especially as we're getting ready to move into the elections and, and things of that nature. You know, everybody has an opinion. And I, I've had to tell several people, it's like, look, I can't make a, a comment one way or the other. It's just not something I ever share publicly. And, you know, you are entitled to your stuff, but I just can't let that be on my place, you know? So I exactly. think that's very, very valid. I mean, personally, I have this for a long time. I did not just allow anybody to become our friends on Facebook. And 
I was very like, mm, you know, this is only family, friends, but I'm honestly an open book. So when I am in public, um, I am in my professional, I crack the same jokes, I keep the same comments. So I've decided, you know what, it's me. Kind of like what you mentioned earlier, right? Find sure. your true self and you're okay with it. Let it out. I know Renee had some comments over there with her HR hat because she was like, yeah, I mean, I never friends or answer any friend connections anywhere for employees ever, even on LinkedIn. I do not. Only when they leave the company, I don't connect with any of them. I just don't because I don't want any of my information to be misconstrued. And I don't <laughs> want to see any of theirs because if I do and they're talking about the company, now I have to take action. So I don't want to put myself in that place or them, right? Because I'm like, oh, it's my personal thing. But no, it's not. Because if you're talking about the company and certain things and a manager's involved and all of that, it's like, now I have to, you know, take some action. But that's interesting. I had someone, I mean, before, like her boss had asked to friend her on Facebook and she didn't know how to respond. What advice would you give them, Maria? I, I actually have people reach out to me and I'll explain to them that Facebook is a very personal place for me. It's where I connect with family members. So no, but I would love to connect with you on LinkedIn if you want to connect yeah. with me there. So I give them other options if they want to, but I am real clear about that because I do have a lot of people who do send requests, especially if I've been at an event speaking, they do want to request to connect with me. I have family members who I know are super verbal. Anyway, uh, you know, and so even though I connect with no. them, family members, I don't connect with them at all on socials. I'll tell them, you know what? I love you. And we could all at the family gatherings and reunions and weddings. I will always talk to you, but I'm not going to connect with you on socials. It's just not where I want to have to deal with that. It distracts me. And I, there's only 24 hours in a day. And I'm just, again, I love you, but not here. This is not where it's going to happen. So I'm very clear about that just because I think we need to be clear about our boundaries. And I'll tell you, that's not where I was when I first started right. in business. When I graduated from college, I was the yes person and I love people and learn through the school of hard knocks that you better put some boundaries in and teach people how to follow those boundaries because then that'll keep you out of any trouble and stress. So I'm very, very solid on that. But I'll tell you, that's not how I started. It took me several rounds. I wish I could say it was just one round of it, but no, it took several rounds to say, okay, I got this lesson. Now I understand it. Make the difference. That's just Make the difference. Oh, Renee, I love that. That's a great lesson. <laughs> that is so awesome. Great advice. And we all have been in those situations or encountered people trying to maneuver that. So let me ask you, Maria, what kind of strategies would you use or recommend to uh, build a network of followers or connections that enhance your brand's visibility. So wanting to be sure that we are in the right view, right? Sure. Sure. Really, again, looking at your actual goals. So I like to, a long time ago, when I was first growing in business and still wanting to reach out and network. I mean, I still do reach out and network. I shouldn't say that I don't, but I was more proactive about it. So I started looking at, you know, who would be good, who could help me understand my occupation better and what I'm doing. So it could be people who held that position before, somebody in a similar position, perhaps, but in another company, maybe somebody who is volunteering or teaching about that, maybe somebody who audits or writes books or is at the cutting edge of information of that occupation. So I knew that I needed a good network of people that could keep me up to date, trained, and also aware of what resources are available in my specific discipline. So that's what I focused on first. Then the rest was really starting to look at who's good, you know, who also has the same interest so that we have that same bottom or similar base of reference. It could be somebody who is also growing in management, maybe leading a small team. Even I've worked, I've had clients who I've connected with after they've been clients, just so that I could say, you know what, I'd like to know what you liked about the experience with me and what you disliked and what are some of the other things that you did because... I don't want to tell you how and where to network. I want to see where you already are at. So that way I can know exactly where everybody else is. Because understanding what everybody's doing and where they're coming from is really where I've gotten my most 
really beneficial experience. I call it OPE. Other people's experience is as valuable or more valuable than other people's money because you're not wasting the time and the energy to find it out. You're learning from them. So I put a lot of value on OPE. Yeah. So we talked about building your network and being intentional about the strategy. So now once you've kind of found your target market, so to speak, take a look at your content. How does someone develop content strategy that reflects their expertise and values? Well, I think it's important to know what do you want to be known for and looking at the content that people are interested in asking about. What are those questions? I happen to utilize a lot of Google tools, the free Google tools. And so I like to go to Google Trends because I deal and work with a lot of entrepreneurs or solopreneurs or freelancers. Because of that, I say you could go to Google Trends. You can find out around your industry, what they're talking about within your city, around um, that actual topic. You can see what they're searching for on YouTube. You can search and see what they're searching for on Google within the last hour. Or But what I explain to people is find out what people are already interested in talking about what the frequently asked questions are. More than likely, as you've interacted in business, you've heard these FAQs. You just haven't been really focused on them. Now you're going to focus and really start taking note of what are some of the similar questions you had. And if you ask yourself at the end of the day, you know, what are the top five questions that I'm always asked? Then you can go onto Google Trends and put that question in and then find out what are the other 120 questions that come from that. Uh, come and you can actually look at that. So there's lots of different resources that are free just to see, you know, what are the other content you call it? It's called hub and spoke. You've got a hub topic. And so you're looking at the spokes around it yeah. is what you should start looking at. I do encourage anybody, whether you're a professional or a business owner to go ahead and get a domain with their name because it's important to be able to be searchable. Even if it's just one landing page, even if it's a free Google site, you know, that you have just a one page that, but it's your name and you own it. I think that's so important because people are searching for your name and you want to be the one that controls that information even more so than socials. Socials are free. You want to be the one in control of that and not just let socials be in control of the information that's out there for you. I have three sons and I did, I mean, the minute the internet was actually very active because When the first one was born, it was not as active, but the other two, when they were born, I bought their domain names right away in their name. And um, I made sure that they have that so that they can control their actual reputation online. No matter what other people see, they will always find that and that will always take priority within Google. So I like that for them. I love when I buy my grandson's domain. (laughs) I really love that. Controlling the narrative. I always think of the same thing, you know, like. I went to um, get mine. I had to throw in my uh, middle initial because it was already taken. Imagine me. Back to what? But I love that. I got it with my middle initial, believe it or not. <laughs> I love that hub and spoke. You know, you put that in there, then you could see the spokes around it. I love that. And we talked about kind of like the personal and professional balance. Mm -hmm. Uh, before, but when you're going through and most people don't just want to do content, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Especially on certain platforms because people are just like, oh, here they go again, right? (laughs) MLM people. It's like, they're trying to hit you up, hit you up. But I kind of look back at the KLT, no like trust. Mm -hmm. If they're just throwing out content, it's like, okay, I don't even know you. I don't trust you. So you can put that content out there, but you know, you're not really pulling me in. So what would that balance be? And it's probably different on each platform, but can you speak to that? Yes, because it is different for each platform, but stay honest to who you are. So if you don't dance and you don't do all these little trendy things, don't do it. You know, that's not who you are. I don't dance on any of my socials. I I see the trending videos. I I see the trending songs. But that's not who I am. Now, I might use the trending music behind me when I'm talking just because I want it to be there because it's getting the visibility. But I'm not planning to dance or do any strange pointing or anything because I want to be authentic to who I am. What I will do, though, is really look at, you know, what is the content that I'm putting out and why is it important? One of the things that I found that people do like is when you tell your own personal story. So it's not just you need to do this, this and this. I did this and this and this. I handled this. I struggled with this. 
I found success in this after struggling with this so long. So when you can tell that personal story, that really draws them in. And I think we need to also look at our content insights. I'm a big fan. If you're not measuring, you're not marketing. And you need to measure exactly if you're marketing and promoting yourselves, what content is resonating with people. So maybe it could be, you know, they're wondering about what advice would you give to somebody who's a new leader? But then around that topic, you see, that's the most important or the most viewed topic of all of the content you put out there. As you look at your post, that's the number one. So maybe around there, you start talking about if you're in your first year, what would you say to yourself as a new college graduate? What advice would you give to yourself? What's the one piece that somebody gave me when I first started 30 days out of college? So still that same content, but you're working around it and giving different perspectives to the different viewers who are going to come at different stages of their life. So I think it's important for you to look at your numbers. And I know a lot of people in business, maybe who are entrepreneurs or running a business, look at that, but it's valid for everybody. We all need to look at our numbers and, and be able to see what resonates with people. All the insights are free within all of the social networks and we need to look at it. So that could help us direct whether or not we're being known for what we want to, or is it really just all the, the goofy dancing things that we're getting known for? And is that really the reputation we want out there? Because we may need to adjust that. I mean, balance is key. And, you know, even just with our podcast, you know, taking a look at the numbers and the insights and what's resonating with people and it's not. Well, it's funny with my, so my husband and I, you know, all sometimes post about us on Instagram and the stories. And it's funny because when I was just posting highly personal, like, okay, we're here, we're going here, we're going to a Dallas Cowboy game, we're doing something else, whatever we're doing, that got some interaction. But really what gets interaction now is I'll just post a picture of us and I'll say, this morning I consulted a client, I coached, did a webinar, and I went ahead and did a Google roadmap for somebody. And now it's time for a husband or fun time, couple time. That's all I need to put. But right there in that one picture, I get much more engagement. It tells them that I do balance between life and fun. They get a peek at fun, but they don't get to see everything, which I'm not interested in showing them that. And this is now we're at this park and this we're at this state. I'm not interested in all that. We're getting ready to go have fun with kids in the park. Then it is the one that to me really resonates. And I find that I can show that you can still be, you know, can, you can be a wife and a person and a mom while still being a professional. Yeah, I want to give yeah. kudos to Anna and Lolly does this too, but Anna does this really well on Facebook and on LinkedIn. She will post a picture or if she's doing something, she kind of gives those teasers and then she'll have like a narrative, or whatever topic of the day or, you know, whatever that is, right? Wisdom Wednesday or whatever things that she does. But I see her do that a lot on Facebook and on uh, LinkedIn because those are the two that I look at. So you're very purposeful. You still get that personal, hey, this is her, but now you're getting her directing that narrative of this is what I'm doing. So that's what she's known for. That's awesome. And it's paid off. That's how my business found me. Speaking <laughs> of that, when you're developing that content and that strategy, you kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier, but how important is that consistency in posting and engaging on social media to build that strong personal brand? That is so important because when you're connecting with people, you think of it as a conversation. If you were at a networking event and somebody asked you a question and you just didn't respond to it, would that foster a relationship? So how much do you want to build relationships? So that's what I look at too. What kind of time budget do you have? And what is the focus? Is it relationship building or is it just broadening? So am I going deeper or wider with what I'm doing with my network? And then once you know that, you can say, okay, I'm going much deeper for the next three months because I really do want to have good relationships with these people I'm connecting with. And that'll happen with me when I go to a conference and speak at a conference, I go wide for that conference. After the conference, then I'm having a deeper relationship with each of them because anybody that I met at the conference, one of the things that I personally like to do is I like to send them a personal message and DM them and just say, hey, it was really good to meet you. If there's another place we can connect, like LinkedIn or better than here, because a lot of them will connect on Instagram, let me know because I'd like to connect with you. And is there anything that I can help you with? Or is there something that resonated with you that you felt was a great takeaway? So I'll either get a good review or at least a comment from them that they're okay with, or I'll make a great connection with them and see how I can assist them. Awesome. Great insights. And that just kind of leads right into the next question. Knowing all of that and understanding that those connections, genuine, strong, personal brand. 
what are some effective ways that people can engage uh, with the audience to boost the visibility, but also to your point and Renee's point earlier, your credibility, which I think is very important. I think we mentioned trust and knowing a couple of times here. Yes. Because you want to talk about things that you actually know. It's not just that you just want to talk for the sake of talking and connecting with people unless there's some purpose for that. Some of the, the strongest relationships I have are people that I was actually at an event and they shared their Twitter account, however they connected on social and I connected with them that way. I might have just DM say, oh, that was awesome. I was in the back of the room, but you really resonated on this point. Then they start a conversation going, oh, that was great. I'm so glad that you saw that or that meant something to you. I was wondering. So you get a little bit more of the story. Now you start that engagement back and forth. My now dear friends, but actually at that time, he was at the front of the room. It was the International Association of Web TV. He actually had a uh, web series and that was on Amazon and on YouTube. Didn't meet him, didn't know him. And I messaged him. I tweeted him after I heard him speak. And I was truly at the back of the room. And after that, we connected. And since then, I've had a chance to be several times for six years on a panel of Comic-Con because he goes to San Diego Comic-Con. That was one of the things on my bucket list. I wanted to go to Comic-Con. My son wanted to go. We both got to go and be involved with this panel. My, my son handled the photography. I was able to be on the panel. And it was from that connection. There have been so many others just from a connection. I might have seen them on YouTube. Maybe they posted something on Instagram. And I just said, you know what? That resonates with me. I understand that because I've got three boys. And so being a boy mom might be this. I connect with them on a personal way, but I do want to stay connected with them because I know it's those deeper relationships. I would much rather be deeper than just wider a lot of times because I see a lot of social butterflies who collect a lot of names, but there's nobody who will, you know, go to bat for you or to be able to help you and help you understand and navigate because. You just kind of know them, but you don't really know them. I like the deeper relationships personally. I love that. And I'll tell you, like Lolly and I, we take pride in being connectors. We're at an event and right away it's like, oh, wait, you need to meet her over there or, or you need to meet them over there. Uh, Angelo says people always remember how you make them feel and they truly, truly do. And they come back to us. And that's that credibility that was built through those genuine engagements and I don't know if you know this, but the reason we thought of you for our podcast is I attended one of your workshops on Google ads and Google marketing strategy and everything. I told Renee, we want her because this is what we want people to know and elevate their brand and understand their brand, right? So it was a cool thing, kind of, kind of serendipitous. I even remember I was driving to Dallas from Houston <laughs> and it was just booked at that time. And I was like, oh, I need a screenshot for <laughs> But it was a great learning opportunity for me being a new entrepreneur after 20 something years in corporate. All of these women in here, we met each other through networking events, connecting through boards, through our brand. And we've become fast friends. And when Renee brought this podcast idea, I was like, I've been wanting to do it. Too. And it was just like, all oh, great. Now we have visibility. Now we have credibility. You talked about the insight. What metrics? Should we be focusing on to measure that impact of our personal brand on social media? Sure. You'll always see impressions being the first thing that you see as far as numbers. Impressions are really not anything. It's just visibility. You think right. of a billboard, people driving past, that's an impression. Doesn't mean that they notice. You're looking for the engagement. It's not just the like, because a lot of us can like things, but it's when somebody shares you. They share you with other people or they make a comment. Oh, that was great. I'm so glad that you did this. When they make that comment, now you've got some really good engagement. And those are the numbers that I look at because there are so many people on socials that are just going through and liking everything. It's almost just as, you know, not meaningful as a scroll or some impression. So it's really important to look at your numbers. It's going to take a while to start. You know, when I started on, on Twitter, and this was back in 2008, so Twitter was brand new. And I started on Twitter and there were actually three of us that didn't know what to do with Twitter, had no idea anything about all these social. And we just said every week, every Wednesday, we're going to get together at 10 o'clock central and talk about what you could do with socials. You know, since then, I think now I have 16,000 Twitter followers, but that was because of that conversation. Then pretty soon it was three of us, then it was eight of us, then it was 10 of us, but we were consistent. We didn't know what to talk about all the time, but we're like, okay, what did you find this week that you like about Twitter or don't or what you learned about socials or this? 
So it's that consistency that is really important. So look at your, in, when you look at your insight, are you seeing consistent engagement on this particular topic? Are you seeing that one is the one that stands out above everything else? Maybe it's even the format. It could be that you have a great topic, so you figure it out. That's the one in insights that people really connect with, but maybe they like it better in text format or in a blog format, or maybe in a video format. So you're going to find that out by looking at your numbers. And again, with what you're doing with Google, and one of the things that I do encourage people to do is make sure you own not just the domain name, but you can have your own Google business profile as a person, as an individual, because you're a person, you, you're, you are representing a personal brand. You have a whole, there's an authorship that actually is available. So a knowledge panel within Google where you can be showcased to as long as you're consistent with what your name is. So you need to, you know, I know that a lot of times in some of the social networks, I can be Maria Lana Duran. Sometimes that's too long a name. I could just be Maria Duran. So I have to be really consistent in explaining in the profile that I'm Maria Duran, but I'm also Maria Lana Duran so that it can pick up that because Google's picking up all of the text from each of the socials too. That's amazing stuff. And I think we're going to have another episode on that, Renee. <laughs> it's installment, but I know I was thinking that because I was known for Carla Hernandez for the longest. Yes. And then when I got married, I changed Carla Decor. But that's true. I, I don't always use Carla Hernandez Decor because it's really long. Yep. But maybe I should. Yeah. <laughs> something well, for the tip. Well, I have a question. <laughs> Dr. Carla Hernandez Decor. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. My question is, it's kind of a follow up when you're talking about consistency mm -hmm. and if you don't have the bandwidth, you know, to keep up that consistency on even just one platform. I know a lot of people use VAs with like virtual assistants or assistants sure. or they have a software. I t I'm a tendency, you know, I have a tendency to get software to help me out. Right. Mm -hmm. As kind of a solopreneur, I'm like, OK, I need to be able to just fix it and forget it. So to speak, <laughs> you know, what, what do you think about? I actually think it's good to be able to do that. But again, keep it where it's real and authentic. It needs to be you. You don't want a VA ghostwriting for you. And then you just see, oh my gosh, they posted about this three weeks ago. And that's not anything I would yeah. say. So you need to feel comfortable with what's going out there and reviewing that. Again, is it just once a month that you can go on there? Is that maybe the consistency you can keep up with? And in that meantime, maybe you're sharing interesting blog posts or publications that you've read and maybe two or three words that explain what you like about that, that virtual assistant. I happen to be a big fan of AI. And so I actually have trained all of my AI to understand my voice. It's read a lot of my transcripts from YouTube. It's read a lot of the written publications I've put out. And so it does a good job doing that, but I still review it before I even put it in to use it. I may have it created, but I will review it and put the human side because it doesn't have the thought leadership that you have. It doesn't understand people. And even though you may train it very, very well, it still is going to come across as not quite being you. So you do have to have a filter of yourself there. Yeah, that was great input regarding AI because so many people are using AI and I think it's a great tool. But like you said, we need that thought leadership to kind of morph on top of it. So it sounds human, right? Yes. A human like you. <laughs> <laughs> so Carla, would you like to uh, take it away with some statistics for our folks? Yeah, so let's. We'll set up with some statistics that highlight the importance and impact of personal branding. So starting with professional impact, did you know that 85% of hiring managers report that a candidate's personal brand influences their hiring decisions? Online mm -hmm. presence, 70% of employers use social media to screen candidates during the hiring process with LinkedIn being the most common use platform. Also, 50% of job seekers who do not have a social media presence are less likely to be considered for job opportunities. I do look them up on LinkedIn and see if I can see what they've been doing. I always um, look them up. <laughs> yes. Right. Like you want to see, are they really mm -hmm. who they say they are, right? Exactly. Content and engagement. 60% of social media users say they are more likely to purchase from someone they follow online. Career advancement. Professionals who use LinkedIn for networking are 70% more likely to get hired compared to those who do not. 
Uh, yes, trust yes. and credibility. <laughs> 33% of consumers trust messages from individuals who are more likely, or, and they're more likely to trust messages uh, from that brand. Trust and credibility definitely go a long way. Yes. So with that, we'll wrap it up with some of the statistics, but they do uh, underscore the, the significant role that personal branding plays in shaping career paths, enhancing professional opportunities, and influencing hiring and promotion decisions in the workplace. So let me share with you uh, some of the tips that we've heard today. I think these are very important. I know I'm taking them away. And as a career coach, I'll be using these a lot. Make sure that you are visible and easy to reach. If you can't be reached, then what are we doing? You want to make sure you network and you make yourself approachable. Right? Sometimes we think about the fact that, oh, we are so, no, we don't like to network. And what we're doing is we have a space that people don't want to come up to us. <laughs> right? I'm just, you set up your value proposition. What is it that you are? Who is it that you are? And make sure that you can communicate that easily. You also want to show the real you online. Plus, you want to maintain a database of your contacts to create industry connections. So some quick tips, but some very valuable tips. In a nutshell, building and maintaining a strong personal brand is essential for long-term career success and professional growth. I believe that wholeheartedly. I would not be where I'm at without the connections that I made and really learning from other people because there was no way I could have done this all on my own. There's people I've stayed connected with for 30 plus years and I let them know just what a remarkable difference they made in my life because of one thing they said that they had no idea that it even meant anything to anybody, but it did for me right at that right time. Absolutely. You have that gratitude. And verbalizing it to people is huge. It really helps solidify your relationship, but it makes a huge difference because those people will continue to do that for others, I think. Yeah, yeah relationships, relationships, yeah. relationships in anything that you do. You're always selling yourself. It doesn't matter if it's within your family, in a company, vendors, future customers, you're always selling yourself. So you always have to be mindful of your personal brand. But Maria, we'd like to. Thank you so much for joining us. There were so many. Not naked. I can't even, I, I know I'm going to watch this over and over. <laughs> Me too. Yes. I'm like, well, just what you, what you shared right now. I mean, people forget that, I think, because a lot of times we are used to seeing brands and company brands and it's people do business with people. It is so key. It doesn't matter as an employee, employer, or consultant and freelancer. It is people doing business with people always. And that relationship building is core. So thank you, Renee, for that reminder right there at the end, because that's very, very important. Yes. Also, we'd like to say, you know, thank you to our listeners. You're going to be so excited about this particular episode. I know you're going to rerun it and rerun it. Maria, where can our listeners find you on social media platforms? You can find me on LinkedIn. And you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter. Those are the three that I stay most active on. But LinkedIn is a great place to connect. If you want to reach out, I'm really open to connecting with people there. So feel free to connect with me. Okay. Thank we'll you. also include your handles uh, in our show notes so that Perfect. people can click on the links and go right to your profiles. Thank you. So with that being said, if you choose to build your personal brand, remember that it's all about communicating your story in an authentic, valuable way so you can build trust with your target market and gain credibility within your company and or industry. So we'd love to hear if you have any strategies that you're using to elevate your personal brand, develop visibility as promised. Here's how to join us as an audience member on the next show episode. We hope you're just as excited as we are. We would love for you to join us. You can go to our True Talk Cafe Facebook page and send us a request to attend season three, episode nine, as an audience member. Be sure to use the hashtag TTCS3EP9. We will respond to your requests with our podcast website links. We welcome your feedback. So please let us know your thoughts about today's show. Leave a comment or review. We will respond to all comments, so please be nice. We'd love to hear your thoughts about today's topic. Please do not forget to like and rate the episode. We appreciate you tuning into our podcast. We hope you join the TTC Crew Facebook page. 
Again, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook using at True Talk Cafe and on X, used to be Twitter, I've been <laughs> used at True Talk Cafe One. Please use the hashtag TTC Talks or True Talk Tuesdays. Recommendations for discussion topics are always welcome. Thanks for listening. Talk soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.